consequence, an immediate uh, consequence, and long term, which with which we are living now. And now the, the immediate consequence of the Balfour Declaration was, of course, the dispossession of the Palestinian people, people like me. Um, uh, that was a direct consequence of the Balfour Declaration, which, just to remind ourselves, um, was a promise of support by the British government just after the First World War to assist a foreign group of, group of Jews uh, who were Zionists, called Zionists, uh, to facilitate a project, their project, to set up a state for um, <coughs> Jews in Palestine. That's, in fact, in effect what the Balfour Declaration was, but it was worse than that, because having given this promise of support, uh, the British administration in Palestine then went on to help the incomers, these foreign Jews, to get a foothold in the country to start to develop institutions, actually institutions of state, and encouraged them and defended them and protected them right until 1948 when the whole project, the, the, the British presence in Palestine was untenable because of the re objection of the Palestinian Arabs to what was being done to their country. So that in effect was the Balfour project, if you like, the Balfour Declaration. Um, but I think you see one of the worst things about this, um, this action by the British was that they didn't just uh, support the entry of an alien community of people into a country not their own uh, in order to establish themselves. So that was bad enough. But what was much worse is the nature of this project, the nature of the people who set it up. And what I mean by that is that the British, I think, probably unwittingly, let in to the heart of the Middle East a group of people with a very, very dangerous set of ideas. Um, well, I'm very glad to see some, some ladies here. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we would have a real gender imbalance. <laughs> um, so, so the British let in a group of people with an, with an ideology which was extremely dangerous and has damaged the region and has continued to damage it. And what I mean by that is these were a set of people with an ideology of entitlement. Entitlement. They didn't come into Palestine grateful to the British, saying, well, thank goodness, you know, our project is going to work. Thank you, Britain. They didn't. They came in with the idea that it was theirs by right, and that Britain's role was to help them implement their right. That's one side of that ideology. And the second side of that, of course, was that it was supremacist. It believed that the project was superior, superior to any other idea. And therefore, so you had, if you can imagine, uh, the entry of people armed with ideas of entitlement and ideas that that, that they were, that their, their thought, pro their, their ideology, the things they believed in were super superior to those people who are around them. And that I think, and I'm speaking as a Palestinian, I will never forgive the British for. Not, not only was it bad enough to let in these aliens into my homeland, but these particular aliens, and this is nothing to do with being Jews, this is to do with being Zionists with this kind of idea. Okay, so in the short time, I have very short time, um, the consequence of allowing a group of people with this kind of idea in their heads into uh, a, a, a country already inhabited by a innocent, an innocent, poorly educated, 
unprepared set of people mm. like the Palestinians. You've got to realize that at the time, we're talking about 1920 onwards, the Palestinians were an agrarian people. They were largely uneducated and illiterate. That's the truth. <laughs> So my, my grandfather uh, and the people around him were people, not, not my grandfather himself, but they were people who tended not to read or write and did not have much knowledge about the outside world. So these people were thrown like a, a lamb to uh, the sacrifice in the face of a sophisticated, quite developed invasion from Europe, which is what the Zionist, the Zionist project was. And inevitably, you don't have to be a genius to predict what would happen if you were to do that. The Zionists set up a state, it was supported by the Western powers, and it, it, it established itself and it expanded beyond the borders that the British had allowed it to have. And the result of that was five Arab-Israeli wars, five Arab-Israeli wars after 1948, the creation of the refugee problem, which I've just talked about, which has been with us for 70 years, because in May of this year, it will be 70 years since the State of Israel was established and Balfour's declaration came into full effect. So, wars, refugees, and we're left with an unresolved Palestine problem, where once upon a time it was a Jewish problem, which was trying to find a solution for itself, we now have a Palestine problem, which we never used to have until the State of Israel was created. So there is now an unresolved Palestine problem, which is a central reason why the region is unstable, and why the world powers, particularly the West, is still involved in the Middle East after all this time. Israel has acted as a destabilizing factor in the region, and its uh, increasing power, its increasing reach, it has a huge arsenal of arms, it has a huge army, and it is a nuclear state. That's very frightening in the middle of a region which, as you see from recent um, times, uh, has, is undergoing a series of changes and uh, instability which we haven't seen for many decades. Israel, therefore, remains today a source of instability and a source of danger, quite apart from the injustice of having set it up in the first place. Now, I've, I've taken over my time, Mr. Chair, I'm sorry, um, and I would want, had I had time, to go into the question of what is to be done about all this. Because after all, you know, we can go on and on saying, and Palestinians do and their friends do, how terrible this was, how unjust, how dreadful, how ghastly, how awful Israel is, but the fact is we're lumbered, we've got Israel. So the question really now is, what are we going to do about it? Thank you very much. Thank you.